Hey everyone, Gary Simon of course Cetro, and lately I've been focusing a lot on Vue.js and today is no exception. We're gonna take a look at what are called page transition animations and all of the major JavaScript front end frameworks have these in this ability to kind of create these nice animations as you, uh, as the user clicks between different routes uh, on the app. And so let me just show you real quickly what we're gonna do today and I, uh, here it is, obviously very simple. Um, and so we can notice, notice at the URL here, we're at the base URL, at the home page. And then if I click about, the URL changes this to completely to about, but we can all notice that the, the transition is seamless between these pages. And you could do a lot of different types of animations. And I, and I will show you just a few different things you can do. Um, and really the possibilities are endless. All right, so just so I, to get this out of the way, make sure you subscribe here if you haven't yet and check out coursetro.com. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to hop into my console real quickly. Oh, but real quick, before we begin, make sure you check out my site, coursetro.com, where you're gonna find a bunch of courses on modern design and development. A lot are free and the others you can access for the cost of buying me like a six pack each month, that's it. Now also, it probably wouldn't hurt to subscribe here on YouTube and be sure to make sure the notifications are turned on. All right, let's get back to it. All right, so the very first command that we're gonna run here is a view command. So make sure that you have the view CLI installed. Um, if you don't know whether or not you have that, just view hyphen V. Notice I have 3.0. Uh, and that gives us access to the view create command. If you have an earlier version, you'd have to use view init. Um, it's still the same thing. Everything's gonna work uh, in the previous versions, but if you want to follow along, just go ahead and upgrade to, to the 3.0 version. All right, so view create, and I'm just gonna call this view router hyphen anims, like for animations. All right, so when we do this, it's gonna prompt us, please pick a preset. Um, so we're gonna choose manually select features the only one that I'm going to choose with the keyboard down arrow key in the space is the view router. That's the only thing I really care about. If you want pre-processing and all this other stuff, you can go ahead and do that. Hit enter. And we're just gonna choose, uh, if you want it in, in dedicated config files, it's fine. It's not really a big deal for this project. And then I don't wanna save this as a preset. And now it's going to install. So once it, as this installs, um, just real quickly, I, I'm using Visual Studio Code as my code editor. It's from Microsoft, it's free. Um, and once this is done, I'm going to run a command called uh, code and then a period, and that will launch it for us. All right, there we go. Um, so let's go ahead and CD into it. And then I'm going to run code period here. And then also yarn serve. So you're gonna need yarn, by the way, um, that command up there wouldn't have worked if you don't have yarn installed. So uh, you make sure they have that installed as 3.0 uses that. And now let's go back to our code editor. All right, cool. Okay, so right off the bat, we need to do a little bit of cleanup work here. So the very first thing, I'm gonna to go to source components here and hello world. And I'm gonna gut everything that's inside of the div class hello. I'm gonna make this bigger with my control uh, plus key here. All right, so again, uh, that's all we're gonna do here just for now, and I'm going to save that. Then we're gonna to go to our views folder, and this is all stuff that the CLI generates, of course. Uh, we're gonna to go to the about view, and I'm just going to add in a lorem ipsum. So lorem, where are we at? There we go. Uh, yeah, we'll wanna encase that in paragraphs, so real quickly. I should have done that first. I just installed that um, Lorem little plugin. Go ahead and Google that uh, if you want to as well. Again, I'm just going to copy this. So this is an about page. One thing we wanna do as well um, is add a, an additional class called page. And you'll see how that works in, in terms of importance. And we're gonna create a CSS rule set for that specifically. Um, down the road, and then we're gonna go to home, and uh, basically the same thing we have going on, so we're just gonna put page here for the class, and get rid of both of these, and let me just make my, my life a little bit easier, just copy both of those, paste this in, all right. And so I'm just gonna put for this one, all right, well, I 
This is lovely. Okay, that's what I used before. And then save it. All right, so now we're gonna go back here to our uh, source app dot view, which is where we're pretty much gonna spend the rest of our time for the most part. All right, so I, I wanna focus on just styling this a little bit better. Uh, if I get out, let's see here. This is what everything looks like currently. So let's fix this up. All right, so, all right, delete all that within a style. And then we're going to import uh, in animation library, a third party animation library. You don't have to use this, but I'm gonna show you how to use it in case you don't wanna to have to write your own CSS animations for your page transitions. All right, so next, I uh, let's see, we're just going to reference just a few generic uh, role sets to get everything looking decent. Um, so let me just paste this in, just a couple things here. We have the body, we're giving it a gray background color here. Font family, we're getting away from that ugly serif font that's default. And then the body, I have a height and uh, we're gonna have some padding on here as well. That's why I put the calc there to get rid of, uh, to, to accommodate for that. And then also um, our main div app ID, which is right here. This is in reference to this line. I'm just going, this is what really gives it the container, the white container that we have uh, with this 50% padding, border radius, margin, nothing very specific to, you know, what, what this tutorial is about. I just wanna make it look good. Um, and then also what's really important is specifically for this, uh, the page transition animations to work well. I found that adding, and this is where, you know, I'm referencing that page uh, class that we added. Uh, I added position fixed and width inherit. Uh, I'm gonna show you the effects of, you know, when we, re when we remove this, uh, once we apply the animations, but go ahead and just save this as is for now. Okay, so now we're gonna get down to actually defining the router animation. So what we wanna do, notice we have our router view right here. This is essentially where our views are placed. And of course we have two of them, which is home and about. And we wanna wrap it with a transition element. So transition, and this is specific of course to view, name. Now we can give this a specific name that we can then reference later on. So it could be anything, router anim for animation. And then if we wanna use this third party animation uh, library, we can go ahead and add the following. So enter active class, animated, and we'll say fade in down. Okay, so where did I get that information from? Let me come up here real quick. So animate CSS right here. All right, so this is animate.css, that's what we're importing. And uh, if you wanna see what it looks like to flash or whatever, um, these are the names of the actual uh, classes that we can add. So like uh, if we want like a fade in entrances, we can like fade in down. So if we want something like that, that's where we, we first have to add animated and that's specific to that that's, uh, animation library and then the name of the actual uh, animation there. So we can also add it, we also have to add another one, leave active class. And this defines the animation for when the element that's wrapped inside of this transition element here leaves the DOM. So like when you click from a different page, what happens to the content that's leaving? All right, so same thing, animated. And then we could say fade out down let me see if that's actually what I used before. Yep, all right. And then we're done with that. And now let's close that up and then save. So let's go ahead and see what this actually looks like in the browser. All right, so I'm refreshing. I wanna make sure any of the CSS changes actually take place. There we go. Notice it's, it's going back from about now, let me show you what happens to this when we don't have that page class defined. So I'm just gonna get rid of that, go back and refresh. It's really jerky. So adding position fixed or even absolute will help fix that issue. All right, so let's go ahead and bring that back. Okay, so what if, or, oh, let's just real quickly, 
let's experiment just to show you how easy it is to use something like animate that CSS. I mean, you can experiment with a lot of different things. Let's just do something ridiculous like a uh, flip in X and Y. I'm not sure if that's going to look good, but we'll try it anyhow, just for the hell of it. So. And then flip in. Wait, it'll probably use flip out, but nonetheless. Yeah, that's kind of ridiculous. You can also put a delay so that the one finishes um, first before the other one comes in. All right, so let's go ahead real quickly and talk about next what if you wanted to define your own animation and you didn't want to use this big bulky uh, animation CSS file. All right, it's very simple. We can get rid of our enter active class and leave active class. All right, so now it's gonna simply rely on any CSS rule sets that we create with the name as a prefix for the names of those classes. All right, so uh, let me go ahead real quick and come down here. All right, so the name again is router anim. So we're gonna use that as the beginning, big, beginning of a CSS class rule set. So paste that. And then we're going to say hyphen enter hyphen active. All right, so now we can use either the CSS transition property to define an animation or an actual keyframe animation. So if we go to animation, we'll say the name of the am animation is gonna be coming. And then for one second is the duration. We'll also say they'll have an animation delay of 0.5 seconds, and we'll set it to opacity zero. And of course, I didn't just know right out of the gates to, to, to specify these values. I did it through experimenting. Uh, and so it's all about experimenting, really. So let's also put router anim leave active. And these different states here, by the way, there are other states that you can use uh, that give you a lot of fine control. So I would suggest researching those. And that's, that was just specific to Vue.js animation. Um, and so let's put in animation. We'll name this one uh, going and for one second. So now let's define the actual keyframes. All right, so we'll put in at keyframes going and we'll just say from and transform. We'll say translate X zero. So this is going, so this is based on the current route that's you know the current page that's in view. So we're just gonna we're just gonna start from where it's at, which is zero, then two. We'll say translate x, and we'll just say negative fifty pixels. You could put percentages or whatever you want here if you want, and then opacity zero because we want it to leave or fade out. All right. So next, let's just copy this. We're gonna do one for the or yeah, coming animation. So this is the one that's coming in. So let's start it off at negative 50 pixels and the opacity will be zero. And then two will be zero pixels and then opacity one, very simple, simple stuff here. All right. so. Let's go ahead and save that. And with any luck, it will work as we want it to. So we'll click on about. There we go. Now the animation, uh, there, I added a delay to this uh, because otherwise, I'll just look at this a few more times. You can see there's no, there's not much overlap. Now if I remove that delay, save it. It kind of is a little bit confusing, so that's why I added that delay. Now, of course, you can, uh, I'm gonna add that back. You could you could add multi-step animations with percentages, uh, like 0%, 25%, you know, to, from, uh, to really add even more complex animations. But at the same time, you do not wanna overdo that because it's going to kill the user experience and nobody wants to watch a ton of animation when they're trying to access different pages. Uh, but for something subtle, I think it's definitely uh, an approach that you could take to really enhance the user experience of the website. All right, guys, uh, hopefully you enjoyed that. 
I, and if you did, make sure you subscribe here. I'm gonna be using actually the same technique uh, on an upcoming uh, Corsetro Pro course where we use Vue.js Vue to create a sort of like a personal site slash portfolio. All right, talk to you guys later.